everybody, I am Net Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the medication Pitocin. So let's get into it. So what is Pitocin? If you're in OB, if you're in your maternal newborn class right now, you're going to hear this med a lot. It's one of the big ones. So what it is, is synthetic oxytocin. So if we remember, oxytocin, that's a naturally occurring hormone we have in our bodies, right? This is the hormone that causes us to have contractions, causes us to go into labor. And then after delivery, after baby's born, we have this hormone to help with bonding for the baby. When the baby breastfeeds, it releases more oxytocin, which causes our uterus to clamp down to prevent bleeding. So that's what the hormone does. So this is the fake form of that. It's the medication version of that. This is the artificial form of this hormone. So what is it used for? Really anything to cause contractions. So reasons we might need contractions, induction of labor. So induction of labor, if you're not familiar with that word, this is when somebody is not in labor at all and we're putting them into labor. Why would we want to put somebody into labor? Maybe they're past their due date. They're 41, 42 weeks, the baby's not coming out anytime soon. We might use Pitocin to put them in labor. Or maybe they have a condition, like they have a heart condition, or they have preeclampsia, or like an uncontrolled diabetes, where it's safer to deliver the baby, and we need to put them into labor. So induction of labor. To decrease postpartum bleeding, I will tell you, this is the most common reason we use Pitocin, induction of labor being the second most common reason. So most moms, and it doesn't matter if you delivered vaginally or C-section, will get one bag of Pitocin after delivery just to kind of help that uterus clamp down to prevent mom from bleeding too much after delivery. It induces breast milk letdown. Now, we would never give this medication to a mom just for this reason. This is just kind of like an extra thing it does. So if we're giving it to them to prevent postpartum bleeding or bleeding too much, it might also have the effect of helping them with their breast milk. We're not ever gonna give it just for this reason. It might help strengthen contractions mom is already having. So induction of labor, you're not in labor at all, we're putting you into labor. This is called labor augmentation. So you are in labor, okay? But maybe you're just not having very good contractions or they're very weak, the intensity is not strong enough, the frequency, the duration, they're just not good quality contractions and your labor is progressing really slowly, we might give you Pitocin to help with that. And then the last reason, very similar to this, it's because they cause contractions, so it might be used in induction of abortion because it puts you into labor, that's its job. Some other like key points I want you to know. It does also have vasopressor and diuretic effects. This is not the reason we give it. This is just something you need to watch out for. It is given continuous IV drip. And this is kind of like the big issue with this medication that differentiates it from the naturally occurring hormone in your body. So the hormone oxytocin in your body, it gets released like intermittently. Okay, so every now and again it gets released when your body feels you need it during labor. Pitocin, artificial oxytocin, we can only give it continuous IV drip. So that is a big difference on how our body responds to it. So special note, natural oxytocin is released intermittently and Pitocin is given continuously. So that is special and that is going to matter later on in this video when we talk about how dangerous this medication is. Pitocin is one of those medications like insulin where it's used pretty commonly but is very dangerous, so it needs to be handled properly. So this is one of those medications that only should be used when absolutely needed, absolutely necessary. It has to be done under a doctor's supervision, so you'll be continuously monitoring these patients in the hospital inpatient setting. The effects can vary. That's one of the big issues with this is it affects everybody completely differently. You'll start at low, which is what we recommend, so always start the lowest dose because some women can be hypersensitive. So some women you will start it on the absolute lowest dose 
and then they'll go crazy with their contractions one on top of another, okay? And then some people, you'll start it on the lowest dose and it does nothing. And then you'll increase it and then maybe it does nothing or it starts to help. And then you slowly increase it till it actually starts to help and actually does its job. But for some people, they're so hypersensitive, we say you just get a little whiff of it, right? Just a tiny little bit of Pitocin and it just causes those contractions to crank out. So that's kind of not a great thing about it is everybody responds to it a little bit differently. Some nursing interventions in labor, if they're getting it in labor, we want to monitor baby's heart rate continuously. One-to-one -one staffing. So since this is such a volatile, dangerous medication, ideally if your patient is on Pitocin, then they are your only patient. It should be one-to-one -one patient nurse ratio. Does that always happen? No. Should it always happen? Yes. You want to monitor mom's blood pressure and pulse because remember it does have that vasopressor and diuretic effect. You want to assess for signs and symptoms of water intoxication. That includes assessing mom's I and O, checking for things like confusion, dizziness, that kind of stuff. You want to monitor the fluid and electrolyte status. And of course, this whole thing is causing contractions. We want to assess those contractions. So are they good quality contractions? Are they increasing in frequency, intensity, and duration? So we're going to assess contractions every 15 minutes. So this is all during labor. If we're doing this postpartum, if we're using this medication postpartum, we're going to be assessing fundal height and lochia. The purpose of Pitocin in labor is to give us good quality contractions. So how do we know if our contractions are good quality or not? They will be consistent in their rate and their strength. If we're pushing, if we're in the second stage of labor, our contractions should be two to three minutes in frequency, so occurring every two to three minutes, and lasting 60 to 90 seconds. That's their duration. So once we get to that point, we don't need to alter the Pitocin. So if you start them on the bare minimum of Pitocin and it's enough and it gets them in this great contraction pattern, that's it. You don't need to up the dosage. You don't need to increase it anymore because they didn't need all that. So that's going to vary person to person, but once you get them into a good pattern, you don't need to increase it. That would actually be a dangerous thing to do. So how do we know if our contractions have become bad contractions with Pitocin? When do we turn it off and when do we need to call a doctor? If they're occurring more frequently than every two minutes, because if you remember, I'm just going to draw a little contraction here. So these are our contractions. This part is the interval. During this part is when the baby is being oxygenated, right? So this is actually very, very important. And we want them to have a two to three minute interval between contractions so that they can get oxygenated. If the medication is, you know, it's not that it's a bad medication. It's just very dangerous and it works a little too well sometimes. So sometimes it'll be like this, and there's like no interval, there's no time, and that's very bad because then baby is not getting oxygenated during that time, and that's dangerous. And how are you going to know that? You're going to see it in the contraction pattern, but you're also going to notice fetal distress by looking at baby's heart rate, so maybe it's lower than normal, okay? Or the rhythm, maybe they had a nice rhythm and now they're flat. Or we're going to note variable or even late decelerations, okay? So these are some reasons we would be concerned with Pitocin usage. In the beginning of this video, I talked about Pitocin being used to induce or augment labor. So I wanted to talk about some groups of people who might need labor induction or augmentation. So who might need Pitocin? People who are past their due date. If somebody's water has broken but they're not in labor. And that happens sometimes. Their water will break, but it doesn't put them into labor. They're not having contractions. There's no cervical change going on. And that's an issue because they are at risk for choreo, which is an infection. And of course, we don't want mom and baby to get that. So if your water has been broken for a long time, or a considerable amount of time, and you're not in active labor, we might use Pitocin to put you in labor. And then of course, if you already have choreo, we're going to use Pitocin to put you in labor for your safety and the safety of the baby because this is a very dangerous infection. 
those who have blood pressure disorders. And this can range from chronic hypertension, gestational hypertension, preeclampsia, eclampsia, whatever. Blood pressure issues, we might use Pitocin to induce you. Moms who have gestational diabetes, a lot of times these babies are macrosomic, which means they're bigger than usual, or they expect them to be bigger than usual at term. So they might deliver them a little early, like 37 or 38 weeks, so that they don't get too big, so that mom's able to give birth vaginally. So that might be a reason to induce somebody with Pitocin. If they suspect low birth weight, if mom is obese or has kidney disease, or if mom has a placental abruption. Now with this one, it kind of depends. This might be an automatic emergency C-section situation, or they might want to induce you with Pitocin and get you into labor. So it kind of depends with that one. So those are some reasons you might need Pitocin. Who are people who should never get Pitocin during labor? This is all during labor. We're not talking about postpartum in this section. So those with placenta previa. So the placenta is implanted somewhere over the ass. Cephalopelvic disproportion. So big baby, little mama active genital herpes, breech position, and any mom who cannot safely tolerate the stress of labor. So maybe people with like congenital heart defects, moms who have heart conditions, can't always tolerate vaginal delivery and labor. So this one isn't hard to remember. Who shouldn't get Pitocin? Anybody that shouldn't be delivering vaginally in the first place. That's how you can remember, right? Placenta previa, not going to deliver vaginally. CPD, genital herpes, all these people, they're not going to deliver vaginally anyway, okay? So it wouldn't make sense to induce them in vaginal labor with Pitocin. So that's how you can remember that one. I've been kind of hinting here or there in this video about how dangerous this medication is, so I wanted to talk specifically about that. So this medication is actually a pregnancy category X, which makes sense because why would you take something that will put you in labor during your pregnancy? You should only have this medication during labor and postpartum. So of course it's a pregnancy category X. It is both a high alert med and has a black box warning because it is so dangerous. And the patient needs to sign an informed consent to receive this medication. So if they are going to be induced or augmented using Pitocin, they need to sign something saying that they say it's okay and that it's safe and they understand the risks and benefits. Our biggest issue with Pitocin, the thing that we don't want to happen, hyperstimulation of the uterus. So this is when the contractions, CTX is just like a little abbreviation for contractions, this is when the contractions are lasting too long, they're too frequent, or they're too strong. Okay, that's what we don't want to happen. So basically, the Pitocin is doing its job, it's just working a little too well, and now it's not safe for mom or baby. So fetal effects, distress, we talked about that, so we can see that reflected in their baby's heart rate or rhythm. This can cause brain damage because of the lack of oxygen to the brain because they're not having those nice intervals in between contractions, and even fetal death. For mom, Big risks here are uterine rupture, water intoxication, which can lead to seizures, dangerously high hypertension, so blood pressure is way too high, and then cardiac arrhythmias. These are some things that could potentially happen. So, Pitocin is a very, very commonly used and very important medication, but it's also kind of dangerous, which is why you need to know all of these things about it to administer it safely to your patients. I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.